Hey everyone, Brian here with another Java tutorial, and today we're going to be talking about classes. So let's go ahead and go to File, New Java Project, I'm going to name this one Classes Project. And then inside the source folder, let's make a new package called Data. And inside of here, we're going to make a new class, but instead of calling it Main, which I usually do, we're going to call it First, because we'll have multiple classes and I want to keep track of them. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make the public static void main for our program to enter. And what we're going to do differently this time is usually we've been writing our entire program and set the main method here. Um, so all of our code has usually gone between these two brackets. And this time what we're going to do is we're going to instantiate this class by just typing new first. And so a class, as you can see up here, public class first, it's the same name as the Java file we created. And everything inside this class is contained between this last bracket and this first bracket up here. So we need to make a constructor. And the way you do that is you say public, and the name of the class, parentheses, brackets. And so when we say new first, what we're just saying is we want to instantiate the first class. We want to run this method here, the constructor. So to see that it works, we'll just print it out. We'll say first class started. Let's try running that. First class started. So the reason we're doing this, and the beauty of it is, is that if you write your entire program within this main method here, because it's static, then that means that all of our variables need to be static as well. In the past, we've written variables like public static int a equals zero. But because first isn't static, we no longer need to do that. We can just say int a. And we can print out a. And there's no error. If we try to print it out from here, we should get an error saying that the static method main cannot access the non-static field A. So let's run this real quick to make sure it works. And first class started, zero. So now let's make a second class. And I'm going to name this one animal. So the first thing that you want to do in this class is make the variables that we're going to use for it. So in this case, we'll make a string for the name and for the sound that the animal makes. And the second thing you want to do is make the constructor like we did for our first constructor. So public animal. And now just with this, you can see that we've created like a whole new type of variable, the whole new class called animal. And the way that this works is we can just say, let's go to this integer up here. We can just say something like animal a equals new animal. You see there's no errors or anything. A is just like another type of variable now. It's its own class, like integer and string. And so when we say new animal, we're going to run everything in this constructor, which right now is empty. So let's make something that says animal created. Let's run that. And you can see we're starting our program from this main method right here. And it's created a new first class and saying, all right, well, what is a first class? It goes up here to the constructor. And it says the first thing that a first class does is it prints out first class started. The next thing it does is it creates an animal called A. And it says, all right, well, what is the animal constructor? The animal constructor prints out animal created. So you'll need to have this code in order to run it from this different class. You can like kind of compartmentalize it. And that's like the whole point of object-oriented programming is that animals is now its own object with its own rules and variables and methods. So let's make use of these two variables up here, name and sound. And inside the constructor, let's ask for a new name and a new sound. Because right now they're null, because they've never been assigned to. They just they don't equal anything. And let's set our name to the new name and the sound to the new sound. And I'll get an error in the first class because this constructor of animal with no arguments doesn't exist anymore. It's going to say, do you want to add arguments to match 
string string. We just type them in here. We can say we're going to make a cat, which makes a meow noise. And now what we can do is when we're making a cat, we're giving it a new name and a new sound. Or we're making an animal, we're giving it a new name and a new sound. So in this case, we're giving it cat and meow. And then we're setting it up here. We're saying, all right, the variables for this class, this instance of this class, are going to be cat and meow. So now we can use methods. We can make a new method called make sound. And it'll print out our sound. So let's go back to the first class here. And we'll say a dot, and you can see all the methods available to the animal class. Uh, of course, you have everyone that's available to all objects. So by default, Java gives you methods like to string and notify, wait. And you can see it says object on the right. But here we want the one for animal. So only animals have this method, make sound. We'll call that. And let's run it. And you can see at the bottom we have first class created, animal created, meow. So when we say we want the animal to make the sound, we actually check in the animal class and says, what does make sound mean? It's going to print out the sound of that animal, which we set equal to meow when we created it. And so the beauty of this is that we don't have access to the sound itself. You can see a dot sound doesn't come up. We don't have access to it. If we actually type a dot sound, I think it might give us an error for it. It says it's not visible. And the reason that is because up here we have it private. So it's only available inside this class. But we don't even need to see it from the first class because this public method of make sound will print it for us. So we can see the sound down in the console without actually having access to it from the first class just by making use of the public method make sound. So animals are just like any other variable now. So we can make an array of them up here. Oops. make three animals and we'll set the first one number zero to a cat we'll make a new one and this one will be uh, a giraffe what noise does a giraffe make I guess that and we'll make another animal um, an antelope? Actually, I think that makes the same as a giraffe. Hmm. Tough decision. This is a really important part of our program, guys, so you gotta make sure you get those animal names right. Uh, here, I know. This is how unoriginal I am. These animals I can think of. So we have our three animals now, so now what we can do... Uh, a doesn't exist anymore, so it's giving you an error. So let's just iterate through these with a for loop. It goes less than animals.length, i++, and we're going to say for each animal at i to make their sound. So you can see in the console here, we print out first class created, and then every time we call the new animal method, every time we make a new animal, we call the constructor, it says animal created. So we have three animals created. And then we go through each and we tell them each to make their sound. So we have meow from the cat, dot, dot, dot from the giraffe, and then blah, blah from the human. So animals really can be used just like any other variable. All right, you guys. Thanks for watching. And that marks the end of the tutorial today. So you guys, god damn it.